back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, I want to have you today. It is our winter vehicle survival kit. Now we've all heard the stories of those individuals trapped out on I-95 in Virginia inside their cars during a winter storm without food, fuel, water, and the ability to warm themselves for 19 hours. Sadly, this is a very common scenario this time of year. Now, what's gonna set my video apart from other people out there doing the same thing right now based off I-95 is the fact that at the end of January in 2014, I was in the same exact situation as those people on I-95. I was trapped inside a 50 passenger bus with other passengers on the highway in South Carolina because a winter weather advisory came through, stopped all traffic in the middle of nowhere. And we survived there for 15 hours or so until the roads cleared up and help arrived so we could continue moving to our destination. We didn't have any food, we didn't have any water, and we were all using the same small bathroom at the back of the bus. And you can imagine how that went. And so I take this topic very seriously because I have a lot of experience with this, first being from the Midwest and having it ingrained in me at the young age to have the things necessary to survive in your vehicle during winter. And then also from military experience, having survived in vehicles and used those vehicles on operation for weeks at a time, I've been blown up in vehicles and survived inside those vehicles until help arrived. And I've been operating in vehicles for my entire military career. So I have a lot of experience with this. Now, any vehicle kit is gonna break down into two categories from my experience. That first category are the items that are gonna keep this vehicle operational, where we can take this vehicle, get it out of the snow, start it, put fuel in it, keep this vehicle running because it is our lifeline to our destination to get to safety. Then that second category are gonna be the items for ourselves, things to keep us warm, hydrated, give us some food and nutrients, things that will keep us alive in that vehicle for a day or two or three until help arrives and we are rescued. Now we have a lot of items at our disposal here in this kit that is on purpose to demonstrate to you that we have many many tools at our disposal and maybe there's some ideas here in this kit you haven't thought of before and you can add them to your toolbox later on for your own needs now we don't have to have all of this stuff but we have a vehicle that can carry things for us so why not pack it with a lot of tools that gives us opportunities to get ourselves to safety it's the old adage i'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it all right, in no particular order, we're just gonna go over these items and then we'll have a few demonstrations with a couple of them that I think are important for you. Now we've got our gas can, large funnel, so we can fill up our truck. That means we can use the heater longer and then we can drive the truck to our destination. All season windshield wiper fluid, keep the windshields clean. We've got our fire extinguisher. It's a good to have thing. And remember this is for you and your buddy first and then the car. We've got our jack our chalk blocks for our wheels, and then our tire iron to get up off the ground, change that tire, and then have a long piece of wood that we can put underneath the jack in case we're in a situation where the terrain is uneven and we can't get under it safely. We've got a tow strap. This is a 5,000 pound capacity tow strap that we can use to either pull ourselves out or pull another vehicle out of a sticky situation. A few signaling items that we have. We have our chem lights at night to mark our position. We've got orange trash bag clippings that we can use as flags up on our antenna or on top of our vehicle to mark it. And then one thing I like is reflective tape. This stuff goes on ships, it goes on little boats that operate at nighttime and you shine a light on it and it's reflected. We can use this, cut it up into strips and then paint an X on the back windshield or the window of our car that light will hit and it'll illuminate and will give us that signal that we can signal rescue, especially if it's up higher off the ground like on our window. But a reflective tape like this, self-adhesive, we can just put it up on a window and we're good to go for a signal. All right, we've got our jumper cables to jump a vehicle in winter when it gets cold outside those batteries are going to start to die or go down definitely had to do it before probably gonna to have to do it again emergency road flares you just take the black top off and then expose the striker take the actual striking cap off and then holding it firmly you just strike the top it will ignite into a flare that lasts about three minutes great for signaling or as an impromptu fire starter
Mini medical kit, treat routine injuries, good to have. And then for some tools, a hatchet, in case we have to chop down some trees or process firewood, or just move a branch or something out of our way, we can process it down with a hatchet. A good multi-tool for using in and around the truck. And then a handheld flashlight that we can use with some spare batteries to illuminate and be able to look around our truck to either find equipment or to fix something or to signal for rescue or help somebody find something in the back of our truck, but a flashlight goes in the truck. Duct tape, what can't you do with some tape? Just a big roll right here, it goes right in the truck, and then when we need it, we have it. Improvisation, we can do a lot of things with duct tape. In this big jar, we have kitty litter, Kitty litter used for traction underneath a tire or to clean up an oil spill. Now an impromptu method similar to that kitty litter is that we can use our floor mats as traction underneath our tires. If we're in a sticky situation, we can try it and attempt to get ourselves out of that snow drift or whatever we're stuck in, but floor mats might be a good option. Next, Road Atlas. Slightly out of date here, but a Road Atlas is a must, especially driving across country. We have maps for every major state and every major area that we're in. We can find our way out or find our ways to built up locations to get warm, get some food, and get some rest. So a road atlas or maps must have. And as part of the vehicle, we have our two-in-one brush and window scraper here. Now one tool I keep in my truck all the time, especially in winter, is a collapsible shovel like this. I've actually had the same shovel inside my truck that my father gave to me when I first got my license and I bought my first car, which was a 91 Ford Ranger, off my cousin for $600. And I've kept that shovel in there and I've dug myself out of a few snow drifts and dug a few other people out of a snow drift to get them to safety. So a collapsible shovel like this goes right into our kit and we can pull it out to dig ourselves out in case we get into that snow drift or if somebody needs some help, we can get our shovel and help dig them out. So things we should always have during winter is a scarf like this Shemag, thick, heavy gloves like my hunter's gloves here, another wool cap or some sort of stocking cap to go on our heads, a spare coat, and then even some sort of thick wool blanket. That way we can stay warm in our car because we're not going to run this car the entire time if we're stuck out in the snow. So we need to have a way to bundle up and stay warm inside that vehicle. And then on top of that clothing, we have good boots with spare socks stuffed inside so we have boots that are warm and thick these are 1200 gram insulate and we could take these boots these hunter boots and walk out of any situation if we have to all right next food and water mres are great if you have them water we can get large bottles of water like this from any convenience store 100 ounces or more is preferable or what i recommend now if you don't have mres that's okay you can get ramen, you can get soup mixes, you can get anything that's not going to freeze inside your car if you leave the food inside your car, or if you take it with you, you have the ability to warm it up or use that food. But one thing you can't have is just an emergency rations pack like this. It's just granola bars, power bars, beef jerky, some candy, chocolate, nut mixes, and then a few drink packets like tea, cocoa, and coffee. And this is about 1100 to 1200 calories right here that fits inside a quart size bag that we can take with us as an emergency ration. So think about non-perishable items. If you're going to store them in your car, things that won't freeze on you, if you keep it in your car overnight and the temperature drops, or things like this, just a small rations pack and a quart size bag we can put inside a backpack and take with us on our trip. And it's 1100, 1200 more calories than we started out with. Say headlamp with some spare batteries. We have two flashlights, remember one is none, two is one. So we have a headlamp that we can wear and then that other flashlight we can use to search. But having another headlamp or flashlight to be able to see at night. This is a solar radio. We have the solar panel right here that we can charge, leave it outside, also takes batteries in here. Or it has a simple hand crank that we can use to charge this radio and then listen to the weather channel. But having a radio like this, we can still check the weather continuously and then monitor that for rescue. All right, next we just have an old soup can and then five tea candles inside. These tea candles will burn for about an hour or two. We can place, take one, light it, 
put it at the bottom of our can and then set this can on the dash on top of that block of wood we have and use this as a warmer inside the vehicle. We've got a small stove with fuel in it so we can use this with a canteen or a cup that we may have to heat a hot drink. Hand warmers for comfort, more of a comfort item than really staying warm, but hand warmers to keep our hands warm. All right, next is a mini survival kit. Now this survival kit just has the basic items in it for fire, water, shelter, food, and then some signaling items. Mostly, it's just gonna have fire lighting items in it. It has a mylar blanket, ferro rod, a lighter, some matches, and some tape. It's gonna have a small Swiss Army knife, a commando saw, one of the better commando saws to take down large material. And then the container itself, along with a few other items in here for signaling, this survival kit is something we would grab, take with us if we have to leave the car or if we're stranded in the middle of nowhere. We have the survival kit to affect survival from the landscape. If we run out of fuel or we run out of supplies, we're out there longer than we need to, or if we have to walk out of the situation, we have the survival kit that we can grab, put in a backpack or carry with us to survive during our travel. Next, just a plastic emergency poncho that we can don really quick. We have to get outside of our car and the weather is pretty bad, we can put this on to keep our clothing dry if we have to service our vehicle. Just a small hygiene kit, toothpaste, toothbrush, and chapstick. A few uses out of these items, but more often than not, this is just a comfort item to give us a little bit of comfort and boost morale to stay a little bit cleaner out there if we're stranded for a day or two on the road. And we have our bucket right here. Bucket goes inside the vehicle to accommodate what will be our toiletry kit. We have trash bags that we can put inside that bucket and use it as a squatty potty. We can use this to clean up. One thing people never talk about is having to use the bathroom. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, everybody's using the same exact bathroom. It gets bad when we're all in there for 15 hours. So having a way to go to the bathroom safely out stranded in your vehicle in our makeshift squatty potty and then being able to clean up afterwards is great. We can take this bag, tie it up, throw it in the back of our truck. It'll freeze overnight if we're out there longer and then we're clean, we're safe, we're comfortable, and we've taken care of that main hygiene problem when you're stranded out in your vehicle and you don't know where to go to the bathroom. Now, a few other items I would highly recommend, depending on the length of the trip that we're moving, if we're driving and we know it's gonna be more than a couple of days, or if we're driving and we expect to have to sleep over somewhere, if we're trapped for longer trips on the road, things we could bring with us is a sleeping mat. If you have a truck bed like this one, you can sleep in the back if you want to, and then, a sleeping bag, a good sleeping bag like this one that goes down to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. We can climb inside of this and stay warm on top of our sleeping mat. And then lastly is just a cheap backpack. This cheap backpack folds down and rolls up. We can put it in our bucket or underneath our seat, but we have a backpack. In the event we have to walk out of whatever situation we're in, we can gather the items we need, leave everything else behind, put those items in this backpack, and then walk out of that situation with our supplies so we're not just carrying all these things in our arms or some sort of makeshift backpack. But having a plan like a spare backpack or a collapsible one like this one inside of our kit makes it easy in the event we have to walk out of that situation. All right, so the way I do this is just a method. There are many methods for packing all this up or packing what you need to and having it ready. It all depends on your car and it depends on how you want to pack and distribute your gear. There are a lot of different methods out there, but this is mine. What I'm going to do is take my good old army duffel bag here and shove all the clothing items inside. So that blanket, that coat, the hat, gloves, and then even the boots. inside of the duffel bag. On top of all that, we got our water, our food, we got our candles and can, mini survival kit, radio, headlamp, spare batteries, hand warmers, hygiene kit, and our toiletry kit. 
We'll grab our stove and our emergency poncho. The map atlas is going to come with us inside the vehicle, so we're just going to put this inside the vehicle separately from our gear. Our medical kit also goes inside the bag. We zip all that up, and this duffel bag goes inside the vehicle cab with us. Just like our map or our atlas, we're going to take our shovel and our scraper with us so they're inside the vehicles with us so we can just grab them, exit our vehicle, and then begin digging so we don't have to come back here and bother with all this stuff. We just go straight to getting ourselves out of that situation or scraping off our windshield. Now with our bucket or our squatty potty, we're going to take all the other items that are here and we're just going to put them inside the bucket, the ones that will fit anyway, and then strap it to the side of our vehicle over here where we have some attachment points that way this bucket does go flying around in the back of our truck and it's right there in the same spot so we can find it day or night jumper cables duct tape we'll grab our chalk blocks we'll throw them in and then our jack we'll throw it in thing I like to do with our excess cordage here is grab a few rubber bands or an airborne parlance retainer bands and just hank the cordage. I'll hank it. I won't S roll it. I know I got a bunch of paratroopers out there flipping out. S roll the cordage and then just put a rubber band around it a couple times. Keep everything nice and tight. And then I'll put the loose strap behind the bucket. That way we don't have any straps hanging out here. Everything's nice and neat. Just in case we have to do a mass tack drop, we're not gonna get caught in each other's static lines. Know what I mean? And then over on this side, I'll do a similar thing where I'll just lash the bottles and the gas can to each other and then just tie it down on this side so it doesn't go flying all over the place. And we'll just tuck it behind her, nice and deep. Put our funnel over here. Jack, good to go. We got our board. It's not gonna go anywhere. Spare strap, attachment. And we'll just lash the kitty litter back here with the toolbox or bucket. All right, very down and dirty video today, but one that is very important. Based off my own survival experience, being stranded on the road for nearly a day, and then a lot of experience inside of vehicles, working around vehicles that have specific survival kits and then specific maintenance kits to keep vehicles running for a lot of different purposes, at least the military side of the house. And then we apply it to civilian vehicles for our own winter vehicle survival kit. So I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I wanna thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm.